As you know, this past Sunday evening, uh, five people were shot in the uh, 5100 block of Cleveland Road as a result of a dispute. And we told you at the scene that three of the five individuals died as a result of that gunfire. One of those being 11 month old Tadeshi Williams, uh, a little boy just three weeks shy of his first birthday. Um, so we have worked that case since Sunday. And uh, based on witness accounts and information gathered during the investigation, we've obtained an arrest warrant for possession of firearm by a convicted felon for Mr. David Anderson. And this morning, while looking for Mr. Anderson, he barricaded himself in a residence on 29th Street. Uh, that situation was resolved without incident, and he's being processed now on that charge, again, possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Uh, the booking is not complete. As soon as it is, we will give you the, uh, the booking doc documentation that we normally provide. Uh, so let me be clear, we have not made an arrest in the incident uh, for the murder. We have made an arrest uh, for uh, Mr. Anderson for the charge of possession of firearm by a convicted felon. Mr. Anderson is a person of interest in this case. Uh, obviously, we developed the information to charge Mr. Anderson for possession of firearm by a convicted felon uh, from witness testimony at the scene and from follow-up investigation uh, that has been conducted since then. But I wanted to come today to say thank you to the community. Um, obviously, there is a lot of sadness that we feel about these murders. Uh, for the mayor and I, this is the second baby in a year. Um, that, and that this has brought forth a, a ton, of, a lot of assistance from the community. A lot of witnesses have come forward in this case, as I've mentioned for the last couple of days. We've gotten lots of cooperation from the community. Uh, we would ask that that continue. So we still have a murder investigation to conduct. We still have lots of pieces to the puzzle to put together. Uh, mm -hmm. But again, I can tell you that uh, we are more than thankful for the cooperation and information that we receive from the community. I also want to reach out and say thank you to uh, many of the ministers in the community that open their sanctuaries to members of the community and obviously have been a great conduit to us, again, for information in this case. So uh, with that, I'd be glad to answer a few questions. Can you say anything about how you came to know of this Mr. Anderson, the process that went into the point of getting to this SWAT situation with a barricade in the house? So without sharing a whole lot of detail, again, because we're still in the process of, of really building that case, um, I can tell you that through uh, cooperative witnesses and, uh, and other investigative uh, results that we've obtained since obviously Sunday night, we were able to determine that, you know, Mr. Anderson was at the scene. Obviously, we know that he is a convicted felon. Uh, we know he was in possession of a gun at the scene. Uh, obviously, that makes him a, a person of interest for us. Uh, we obtained that warrant, and then they began looking for him uh, on Monday, and we were able to track him down this morning. Was he only a convicted felon as a juvenile? He gave us a juvenile criminal history. We will give you the full criminal history as soon as we pull that up. Do you think he could have He is a person of interest in, in the case, absolutely. Do you know if there's any other suspects? Uh, at this point in time, we are asking the community to continue to provide us information. We do know this, there are multiple witnesses that we believe at the scene that have not come forward yet. And we would ask them to, you know, to, through the variety of channels that we've provided uh, and that the community has provided uh, through their, their clergy, through council people, through anybody they have contact with, uh, we wanna make this as comfortable a process for them as we can. So if there's anybody else with additional information uh, that, that can shed any more light on the situation, we would ask them to come forward and, and give us information. What we do know today is that uh, this suspect was at the scene and did have a gun. And, uh, and again, he is a person of interest in this what case. Uh, well, we're not gonna comment on right now what, what else, what are the parts of the investigation uh, uh, we you know, concluded or kind of where we're on the murder case. I'm not going to comment on the on the the, uh, the, the gun. Is the boyfriend of the 18-year-old who was killed? Is he the boyfriend of the 18-year-old? Yes, he is. Yeah. And was he identified in that surveillance video from the corner store? Were he was guys? not identified in the surveillance video. We have used the video. We have there are multiple videos that that we have, uh, and again through those videos we know that there are more witnesses that have yet to come forward. So we are asking some of those witnesses uh, that we have seen in terms of numbers on the video. Um, to come forward and again provide us information uh, that will help us again solve this murder. So again, as we stand here today, we are making an arrest on a possession of firearm by convicted felon case. Uh, this person that we have arrested is a person of interest in the murder, and we need more help closing this loop and, and completing this investigation. So we're asking the community for that help. Do you suspect um, other people may be involved? Other than this man, can you say if you're looking at it? There are, there are multiple other aspects to the investigation that I'm not going to comment on, but, but I can tell you we do need 
more help and any help from the community. So any information someone has or someone else that may have been involved, we would ask them to come forward. Mr. Mayor or Sheriff, either of you could probably address this. I just talked to a number of people in these neighborhoods. They say, I saw a number of arguments breaking out in the streets with people stressed out, some people saying they can't sleep at night because of concerns. Anything you can say to the community in this area? Well, you know, we said the other day that two things we want to do is provide justice in this case and, and try to bring peace back to those communities. And again, that's something that we have to do in in, a, in collaboration, again, uh, for me especially, I believe, with the faith-based community. I think the pastors have done a good job of getting out in the community and trying to calm people's, you know, anxiety. And, and listen, this case is terrible. So I, I completely understand uh, the emotion around this case. Um, but again, that's why we want to come forward today and say that, hey, we've made some progress and again, ask for that additional help. You know, but in terms of the neighborhoods, look, it's all, uh, a case like this is always going to have a, a huge impact on a neighborhood. And we can't, you know, thank the community enough, not only for their help, uh, but now for helping those neighborhoods to help, you know, bring some, again, peace back to those neighborhoods. Do we know if that's his home, the address? That is not his home address. Not his no. home. Do you know why he was there? Do not. Are you able to tell us if there was more than one source of gunshots? So in the video, you see gunshots coming from the person by that SUV. Were there gunshots coming from the other side? So we're not going to comment to that level of detail on, on the case, but I will tell you this. Uh, anybody that has more information, anybody that can paint a picture for us that, that, you know, was there and saw it, and we believe that other people were there, and we believe we do have other eyewitnesses that we have not talked to, we would ask them again to come forward and, uh, and share what they know with us to help us solve this case. Are you having success with the community talking to people? We know oftentimes in crimes that's a struggle. How are they this time? Well, we are, and that's how we got to this point today. So I can tell you that, that we have had a, a, a really a lot of support uh, and interaction from the community, a lot of great information, some of it anonymously, some of it not anonymously. People coming forward and saying, I, here's what I know and here's what I want to tell you, or here's what I will tell you. So, um, again, I, I've been uh, pleased with the cooperation we've got from the community, although it could always be better and we could always do more. And that's part of why we're here today is, is again, asking anybody that has any additional information to please come forward. Is Mr. Anderson cooperating at all? Uh, we're not going to comment on that at this point. Have you guys talked to all the victims about this, about the arrest? Have we talked to all the victims about the arrest? No, not at this point. So this is, again, we, we took him into custody at probably 830 this morning. So the families have not, are not aware of this? Some of them may be, and I can't answer that question, but we'll find out for you. Mayor, any comments? Are you relieved to see the arrest today? Uh, any words for the community here with this progress? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Sunday night, uh, a tragedy uh, fell upon a number of families in Jacksonville. And here we are, and that's a tragedy for all of us. Uh, I've said before, we're all family in this city. And here we are three days later, and, and the sheriff and the men and women in uniform have a uh, person of interest. So. Uh, I'm glad to be standing here with the sheriff right now with this news. Any questions? Uh, last question. Can you tell us if it was a shootout, if there were multiple shooters? So we, we won't confirm at this point any more details about the investigation. Uh, again, one more time, I, but I would, I would encourage anyone with any information, uh, obviously you're hearing that, so if, if somebody else has information and detail about that, please come forward and let us know. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Well, sheriff Mike Williams, Lenny lot. Curry. Next chapter being written in a story that started unfolding in the late evening hours of Sunday night. Three days later, the latest chapter written closed at 8.30 this morning when uh, the SWAT team confronted a man holed up in a house in Moncrief Park. He's 21-year-old David Anderson. While this news conference was going on, we were doing some digging, got an idea as to his background. The sheriff alluded to it, wouldn't mention it, but News for Jax has discovered that in 2014, he was arrested for possession of marijuana, assault on a police officer, resisting police, and possession of a firearm by a delinquent adult. That means he has at least one felony arrest as a juvenile. Now, as you know, when I, uh, I mentioned the story started unfolding Sunday night, it resulted in five people being shot, two young women and an 11-month-old boy. Two others were shot, taken to the hospital. The next morning, Mayor Lenny Curry came out and he said, this violence has got to stop, and it personally angered him. And there was an all-out search for the shooter. Now, this man, 21-year-old David Anderson, has not been charged with anything other than possession of a firearm by a convicted felon at this point. 
You heard the sheriff call for witnesses. What that means is they are actively working to build a case. More on this story as we learn more throughout the day. And here on TV, as well as newsforjax.com, we 